the next speaker is uh, Denis Fedosev uh, from Lomonosov Moscow State University. And his topic is uh, certain constructions of quantum multiplication. Thank you very much, Sophia. It's a great pleasure to give a talk at this conference. And uh, today I'll be talking about our joint work with, oops, I'm sorry. Yeah, our joint work with uh, Valery Bardakov. Uh, this work is still in progress, but uh, I will tell about some of our results and what we have already done can be found in the preprint at archive, uh, archive. So um, feel free to check it out if the topic is interesting. So today I'll be talking about quantiles and some structures in them. So I begin with a well-known uh, definition, quantile, non-empty set with operation, which satisfies the following axioms at the idempotency, the um, uh, right invertibility, and the self-distributivity. And of course, there are a lot of different quantiles, and it's a great question how to describe them all in general. And as far as I know, there is no like common description for the quantile sum this kind of theory. But let's begin with some examples. The most maybe well-known and well-used quantiles. So the first one is the trivial quantile, where the operation returns just mm, the, left, uh, you know, the left argument for all pairs of A and B. Uh, and then we'll concentrate on the case where the set Q is, uh, is a group actually, not just some set. So we have the n conjugation quantile where the operation is just the conjugation by the nth power of B. Then we have the core quantile where the operation is B A, A minus one B. In particular, if the group, uh, group is a billion and we write it, uh, the operation is addition, then taking the operation to B minus A, we get a partial case of the core quantile, the well-known and so-called Takasaki quantile. And finally, the final simple example is the Alexander quantile. If we take uh, phi to be uh, an element of the automorphisms group of Q and we set the operation to be like written, then we get the Alexander quantile. Uh, by the way, one interesting structural theorem is about so-called verbal quantiles. So if we take uh, a word in a free group on two generators, then we call the quantile uh, verbal if the operation is just obtained from this word by substituting each x, so the first generator by a, the left argument, and each y, the second uh, generator by b, second argument. And in the previous slide, let me show it again, we have several examples of the uh, verbal quantiles. Uh, actually, the first three quantiles here, trivial, and conjugation, and core quantile, all are verbal. And uh, very intriguing theorem due to body of Nasibulov states that uh, actually there are no other verbal quantiles at all. Okay, so why quantiles are interesting and important? From our viewpoint, from not theoretical viewpoint, Mm, they are great to construct different node link and braid invariants. To name just two, we have coloring invariant, one of the very first uh, invariants person learns when he studies the node theory, and fundamental quantile. So if coloring in, uh, invariant is, well, reasonably easy, easily uh, compu compu computable, but it has shortcomings. Then fundamental quantile, which was the original, uh, let's say, reason maybe for the quantile to IP in Joyce and Matveyev's works. Uh, it's a very strong invariant, as it's known, but it's well, very difficult to, to, to compare its output. But it turns out that quantiles are useful not only to construct not invariants, but also to construct invariants of other objects. Uh, for example, two dimensional nodes or more to the point, not handle bodies. So if we take a three handle body in R3 and somehow note it, 
Mm. So embed it into R3 somehow. Then we have a knotted handle body or more generally linked handle body. Then we have several connected components of the structure. And it's a great question how to differentiate them from one another. So what invariants can be constructed? And before I come to the gist of my, of my talk, to the multiplication of quantiles, let me present the construction which was originally proposed by she uh, exactly uh, when starting the knot handle body. So G families of quantiles are defined as follows. Let G be a group and let us have some indexing set X. And for each element, element of this indexing set, we have an operation. Uh, pardon me, vice versa. So G is the indexing set and X is a base set. And operations are from X squared to X for each G in the indexing group. And we have the following X. So first of all, each operation is that important. Second, second axiom is very interesting for, in part, it was exactly what motivated our study of multiplications of one. So you see that the second axiom uh, forces uh, such an interesting uh, composition law. So if I first multiply X by Y using the G multiplication, G operation, and then multiply it by Y, by the same Y, with another operation given by uh, uh, H, then uh, we have a new operation, which exactly corresponds to the multiplication of G and H in the group G. And finally, we have an axiom somehow resembling a distributivity, but, but with a twist, that's called a twisted distributivity. So in the middle, we have not G as we would expect if it was a distributivity axiom, but G uh, conjugated by H. And it is easy to check straightforwardly that for each G and G and the group G, this operation is actually a quantile operation. And also if we take the direct product X by G and define this operation as written, then we also have a quantile. And it is called the associated quantile of the G family. And exactly this associated quantile gives us a coloring invariant of uh, a knotted handle body. So if we try to tackle it, we see that the quantile itself, the original quantile, is not enough to construct a coloring invariant, but this associated quantile to the G family is just, just exactly what's needed. And uh, we have also tackled this construction and variated it a bit. So the first variation is known also from the Ishii's works. So we can actually take not the group G, but a quantile Q um, and a bit um, change the axioms. So, Mm, the second axiom about the composition transforms into this uh, uh, requirement for this mapping to be a bijection. And also the third axiom transforms into a very similar one. So if, as you can see here, the conjugation is substituted by just A circle B, where circle is this quantile operation on the indexing set. So it is easy to understand that the G family of uh, quantiles must be something like the partial case, uh, partial case when uh, the, um, uh, uh, our indexing quantile is a just a conjugation quantile. It is not exactly the partial case because the second axiom still differs, but well, they're quite close. And finally, that is our generalization. If we introduce uh, another mapping F, from G by G to G or from Q by Q to Q and change the third axiom in the following form. Uh, it looks more convoluted, but still it's manageable. And then we have some generaliza uh, generalization, which we call GF mm, family of quantiles. And again, the G family of quantiles is a partial case of this construction. Uh, I won't delve deeper into this theory of 
families, uh, we have another work in progress. And I hope one day to deliver a talk on it, some conference, or some seminar. But uh, for now, our goal is to understand another thing, uh, the composition of quantum operations, which again was motivated by the G family second axiom. So let Q circle and Q star be two quantiles defined on the same set. That's important. And let's define the compositions, uh, composition of these oper uh, operations by the very simple rule. So first we multiply by B using circle, and then we multiply by B using star. So if I go back, you see that it's it, exactly what happens on the second, uh, uh, on the right-hand side of the second axiom. And the question is, will these operations, circle star, be a quantile operation? In general, the answer is negative. There are many simple examples. For example, if we take the three uh, non-isomorphic quantiles which uh, exist on the three element set, here they are, T3, R3, and J3. And if we try to compose the operations in different orders, some of them in the middle of the slide are indeed uh, but if we uh, compose R3 with J3 or vice versa, we have the following multiplication tables, which are not one multiplication table. The operations are not quantum. So we see that the question whether composition is good uh, structure, uh, good operation on quantiles and sense is non-trivial one. And we have the following statement. So this operation circle star is always quite important and right invertible. If in addition, we ask the star to be distributive with respect to circle, then the operation circle star is self-distributive and so we get a quantum. Uh, this lemma is very simple. You just check everything by hand. And in the process of checking, it becomes obvious that to get the inverse operation for circle star, we need to get, uh, we, we need to take the composition of star inverse and circle inverse in the reverse order. Uh, so if those conditions are satisfied, we get a quantum, which we call uh, the product of the quantiles we began with. So we have the multiplication of quantum. And final remark here is that in this lemma, we have a, a sufficient condition for the operation to be quantum. So if star is distributed with respect to circle, then we get a quantum operation. But is it necessary? It turns out that no, uh, there are examples where uh, circle star is a quantum operation. Star is not distributed with, with, with respect to a circle, sorry. Uh, and uh, for now, I don't have any um, compact form of the necessary condition for the separation to be a quantum. And it's a very interesting uh, problem, very interesting question, how to understand looking at circle and star if their composition is a quantum operation. So a very simple example is quantum power. So if we just multiply, Quandle by itself many times. Uh, and the negative power is if we take uh, multiplication of the quandle defined by the inverse operation. And uh, there is a simple lemma which can be can checked and it can be seen in our paper. We see that any power of quandle is actually a quandle. So, so application of models. But it's just uh, one simple example. We can somehow generalize it again. So let us consider two quantile operations. Again, on this set, and consider all the words, finite words, in the alphabet, circle star, circle inverse, and star inverse. In general, this um, word, which defines some composition of those operations in the natural manner, uh, in general, it has no obligation to be a quantum, no reason to think so. However, we have the following theorem. So if 
and the operations are mutually distributive, then any word, any finite word in this alphabet defines a quantile operation. So by the previous lemma, um, uh, just the simple star circle quantile operations, but not only them, but any compositions whatsoever define. So for each word in readers, we have a quantile. And multiplying those two quantiles, uh, get a quantile for this family. So we have a set of quantiles which is closed under quantile multiplication. That gives us a group of quantiles. So the operations, uh, the operation is quantile multiplication. The it's just the tree quantile and the inverse for a quantile with variation star, quantile with the inverse variation star with the, with the bar. And of course, if you have no, two operations by row, can correspond to the free group on n generators, where n is the number of operations we have. and we get a quantile group which we denote in sub f. f is this free group. This group has some interesting properties. So first of all, uh, if we take a free group on n generators, then the group qf has a structure of gf family of quantiles. So I introduced the not just to give a scope of our work, but it has a very mm, close connection to the multiplication. Indeed, is a GF family of quantiles. And hence, we can get some properties of, the, of this QF studying GF families of quantiles. In particular, for this exact case, we find that this group of quantiles is commutative and it's generated for that reason just by the quantiles with operation of the form mm, circle to the power of n star to the power of m, where n and m are some integers. Mm, without uh, any additional considerations, there was no reason to see that this uh, group is commutative, but it actually is. And um, let me just present and several formulations of known properties of models in this language uh, to more or less round up my talk. Mm, so first of all, first example, let's consider an n-quandle. Quandle is called n, n quandle. If we take a and multiply it by b and times to the right, and then we get a again. In our notation, we see that what is written here is the condition that n's power of our quandle is a trivial quandle. So we get a cyclic group of order n generated and consisting of those quandles written. In the middle of the slide. So we can have a, a cyclic group uh, with respect to quantile multiplication. In particular, mm, and um, it's called, I'm sorry, uh, the, the quantile where mm, uh, the second power of each, uh, well, not second power, but where the operation coincides with its inverse is just the quantile whose second power, whose square, is a trivial quantile. So for n equal to uh, the second example, less um, trivial maybe. So let G be a two-step nilpotent non-abelian group and let the square of every element to line its center. Such groups are well known and they exist. Mm -hmm. So consider the core quantile on this group G and conjugation quantile on the, the same group G. It turns out that their products are also quantiles and they generate the group is amorphic to the abelianization of this group G. And one more, uh, one more example. Let us consider some different automorphisms. And it turns out that if those automorphisms compute, then uh, integers can operation so called to the case. And it's also quantile operation. So again, we have a group defined by two automorphisms. 
So my slides end here, and I'd like to say a couple more words. There are a lot of problems, a lot of questions, and a lot of area to cover in this theory. So apart from um, trying to describe the necessary conditions for this uh, operation, I can name how to find multiplication of bundles defined on different sets. In this talk and this work, we have two quantiles which I define, but this is why, how to multiply. The nature is to somehow extend both operators on the union of these sets and then use our techniques. But for now, there were no successes in this approach. And if we do it, it would be very interesting. Uh, also, this multiplication connects with different things like multiple quantiles uh, defined. Mm, uh, and a very interesting question is to study some multiple analogs to when we work with, when we work with nodes, we get and hence Young's equation. So uh, here we have extra equations, uh, and it's very interesting to uh, work how they operate, which says uh, finally those quantiles, as I said, have connection with G family of quantiles, G family of quantiles is a partial case of those. And so they can be used to construct invariants of knots, of knotted handle bodies, of uh, graphs, for example, trivalent or multivalent graphs, and so on and so forth. And it's also a great open field of work and study. So I think that's more or less um, what I wanted to tell today, this short um, introduction in our work. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, are there any questions? Mm -hmm. I think something in the chat. There is something in the chat. Uh, is there any connection of this construction with quantum extensions and cycles? Yes, uh, there are uh, quantum uh, connections. Mm. So mm, I think that. Mm, Valeria mentioned uh, the resemblance be between our construction and those uh, found. Then I yours I can uh, mention things that you take. Let me go back to the yeah right here. Then this mapping F, which sends power, um, pairs of elements of G to mappings uh, from uh, so square of X to X, so which uh, sends each pair of elements of G to some uh, operation, some um, quantum operation. Then this mapping F set to some this I have to do it. So yeah, it's quite close connections, I'd say. Then maybe thank Dennis again. Thank you very much. Thank you.